welcome to the E! News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. The smell of good bread baking, like the sound of lightly flowing water, is indescribable in its evocation of innocence and delight. M.F.K. Fisher, The Art of Eating. Today, we will be venturing into the Purple Room and discussing bread making, bread baking, and the history and culture of bread. And today with us is Laura Abobi and Danny Clark, who uh, teach... These guys are four years old, is that right? Yes, four and five. Okay, I have to tell you, I, I've taught from fourth grade through twelfth grade, but I have no idea how you teach four-year-olds. Um, so I'm, I'm in absolute awe of what you do, uh, and especially since I've seen what's already on this program, I'm even more in awe of it. And what we're talking about is, this is a whole unit. Uh, that's really what we would call a STEAM unit or something that incorporates science and technology and art and many other things. So how did you come up with this idea of doing a bread unit for four-year-olds? Well, we wanted to do something that we felt like would connect all of us, connect the teachers to the students, the students with their families, and all of us together in our community and the community outside of school. And we thought, what better way than to do that with something that every single culture experiences, a food like bread. And so it was a way for us to share some of ourselves with the kids. It was a way for the kids to share some of their selves with us and to sort of build something together. And so you invite, uh, is this just parents or are there other people who are involved in this who come in? Because I know you have experts that come in, like yeah. professional bakers, right? So we invite parents to come in to share any breads that are special to their families and we reach out to um, bakers or experts in the community who can also come into the classroom to share their craft with their children. And we also had teachers on the floor that came in and shared some breads from their culture as well as our very own Mora who came in and did a Passover lesson and shared matzo which was a bread unique to Passover with the kids. Okay, so so they they actually bake each of these breads in class. Yes. Yep. And so what's that? How do you do that? <laughs> um, we do a lot of facilitation. Uh, we work with small groups of kids and make sure that every child in the classroom has a turn doing some recipe. Um, and we also, you know, for those who aren't bakers, we also have what we call the cooking show technique in which our family will bake something at home and do most of that work at home together and then bring in the finished product or bring in, you know, most of the steps already completed so that within our schedule we'll be able to finish it off and serve it for snack. Okay, for snack. And so how many different varieties of bread do they have for snack? So far, I think we've had about, if I can recall correctly, about over 20 different kinds of breads we've tasted over the last four weeks. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. When I was thinking about this project, I was thinking about when I was four years old. And when I was four years old, the bread guy, the, it was actually the milkman would come by each week and you would have bread with him as well. But the, the options weren't very intriguing, <laughs> certainly not as intriguing as these are. So the students get to taste all these different types of breads and, and, re, and know and learn where they all came from and what cultures they came from. Have you had any surprises with the students like saying, wow, I, I never tasted that or that's really like my favorite bread and comes from a completely different culture than they are? A big fan favorite has been fairy bread, mm -hmm. which is basically white bread here in the U.S. with butter and sprinkles on top. And it comes all the way from Australia. And kids in Australia like to eat it at birthday parties or like for snacks. And so our kids have made it in the classroom and have also made replicas of it to sell in our classroom bakery. And there has been no complaints about the fairy bread, <laughs> as you can imagine. That's very nice. So they learn to 
They learn about the culture of the bread. Mm-hmm. They learn how to make the bread, mm-hmm. and then they learn to actually sell the bread yes. and, and create a business from it. Yep. And we've taken trips to the farmers market to see that process happen of selling different kinds of bread, mm-hmm. and we've taken trips to the pizzeria to see how that kind of bread gets made too. Very cool. And even though bread is really tasty and 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 looks great and all that. What about this moldy bread? What are we learning from this? We didn't only just want to look at how bread is made or where bread comes from. We wanted to look at, you know, other things that come with bread. And so we talked about um, bread molding and what mold is and where mold comes from and what it looks like. Um, and so we had that out on our science table and we actually tried an experiment with bread molding where we try to hypothesize what kind of bread would mold first whether clean bread would mold faster than bread that was dirty or bread that hadn't been touched at all and so we put that out on our science table to see what would happen and the children children made their predictions as to which slice of bread would uh, go moldy first mhm and and were they right or we're still waiting <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting to see our results. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, mm-hmm. wow. This is such sounds like such a great unit and and very impressionable for a four year old to learn this whole comprehensive uh, idea of culture and and how to make food that you can live on and the science behind it. Uh, I'm sure this is going to remain with them for their lifetimes. Thank you so much for being with us today and. Uh, Good eating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again to the Purple Rooms teachers Laura Abobi and Danny Clark. Your students are very fortunate to have you. And let's everybody remember to let your life speak. <laughs> <laughs>